Fairhope, all of four months ago, Stephen K. Bannon was plotting a takeover of Washington and the Republican Party from his office in the West Wing as chief strategist to President Trump. On Tuesday, M.R. Bannon the private citizen stood where his latest fight had taken him, the mulch floor of a barn in southern Alabama, where he delivered a passionate plea to elect Roy S. Moore, the former judge who faces numerous accusations that he preyed on young women, some of them teenagers. Railing against Republican leaders in Washington, the mainstream media, and M.R. Moore's many critics inside his own party, M.R. Bannon told the crowd of several hundred who had crammed into the barn, they want to destroy Judge Moore. And you know why? They want to take away your voice. If they can destroy Roy Moore, they can destroy you, he added. When M.R. Moore took to the stage, where an American flag the size of a billboard served as the backdrop, he worked his way through a speech that touched on everything from Common Core, to the value of military service, to bathrooms for transgender people. They don't want me up there. I know that, M.R. Moore said softly, referring to his would-be colleagues in the Senate. They don't want somebody up there with an independent mind. It was not quite the fight M.R. Bannon envisioned leading. But it will have to do. The stakes for M.R. Moore, the Republican Senate nominee who next Tuesday faces off against the Democrat Doug Jones, are indeed high. The race has become a closely watched referendum on the Republican Party leadership in Washington, the credibility of the national news media and the country's tolerance for political spectacle. But the only person who may have more on the line than M.R. Moore is M.R. Bannon, who is risking his own campaign to topple Senator Mitch McConnell, the Republican leader, as well as other incumbent Republican senators across the country. M.R. Bannon, who never publicly questioned M.R. Moore after the allegations first surfaced last month, has seen a fortuitous turn of events ahead of the rally here. M.R. McConnell, who had urged M.R. Moore to get out of the race after the Washington Post reported that a woman had accused the former judge of touching her sexually when she was 14, softened his insistence over the weekend and said that he was going to let the people of Alabama make the call. Then on Monday came an endorsement from M.R. Trump the president, who had stayed away from explicitly encouraging Alabamians to vote for M.R. Moore, though he did cast doubt on the veracity of his accusers' claims, called M.R. Moore to offer his encouragement, and said on Twitter, we need his vote on stopping crime, illegal immigration, border wall, military, pro-life, vice admiral, judges' second amendment, and more. Less than 12 hours later, the Republican National Committee reversed course and said it was reinstating the support it had pulled from M.R. Moore, lending his struggling campaign a crucial lifeline of manpower and financial support as the race enters its final week. The Republican Party now finds itself in a situation remarkably similar to the one it was in last year with M.R.